I call the Honourable Louise Upstone. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's a pity that the um, Speaker before me um, really kind of diminished the serious issue uh, that we are speaking about today. Uh, and I think it sort of brings the House uh, to a level that was um, rather unfortunate in terms of uh, politicising an issue that I'm sure each and every one of us in this House uh, can share a story of uh, a family member or um, themselves or uh, a friend. So I, I do want to start by acknowledging Jan Logie and uh, drafting a member's bill and bringing it to this House. Uh, and uh, given that the speaker before me didn't really acknowledge it, I want to make clear for the House that National supports the intent of this legislation. Uh, it, of course, builds on the significant record um, that the National Government had, both in terms of supporting victims of crime, uh, but more importantly, around tackling the very real challenges of family violence. Uh, and the, the substantial work and attention that was brought uh, to this issue with the uh, cross-ministerial group of which I was a member, with 16 different portfolios involved. And one of the challenges with such a complex issue, such as family violence, is uh, really unpicking it and making sure that the efforts of all of the agencies involved do have uh, the maximum gain for the very people that you are intending um, or that the ag agencies are intending to support. Uh, and one example that my colleague, uh, the Honourable Judith Collins, raised was the integrated safety response. And I do hope... Uh, yes, and, and my, my colleague Chris Bishop uh, refers to the fact that it's only funded for one more year. And I do hope that members opposite uh, realise the value of the integrated safety response uh, and uh, listen to the very people that are working in the uh, integrated safety response team in Hamilton uh, and in Christchurch. And I'm sure Jan Logie has gone and visited them and met them and heard about the stories of the impact that that is having um, on the victims. And, the, and one of the examples that was given uh, in my own very recent visit to the integrated safety response was um, the ability for uh, such a, a greater impact um, on the victims, on the perpetrators, uh, and actually on the wider family members and community that they are involved with. And one, of course, uh, one of those groups is the employers. And one of the things that I think is that we've seen a significant shift in recent years is the number of employers who have um, come out with family violence policies. Um, Countdown is a fantastic example of how they support um, people that work in their environment. Uh, and there are many, many others. And one of the points that uh, I want to make is, uh, that was made by my colleague, uh, the Honourable Judith Collins, is when there is such a critical issue such as family violence and um, ensuring greater access to support um, that victims need, you know, where should that responsibility lie? And I think if we were honest with one another, we would say, the responsibility lies uh, in many different areas, uh, within families, within communities, and within uh, government and government organisations. And it's important that that balance uh, is struck in the right place. So yes, in terms of um, public good, in our time we funded a number of initiatives, the integrated safety response that I talked about, uh, which included $46 million um, of operating funding that was very much around a new approach to um, the services, but also frontline, frontline delivery. And, uh, Mr Speaker, one of the other things that hasn't been raised today that I think has had a significant impact on uh, the ability or, uh, for victims of family violence to deal with um, the many and multiple challenges they have to face is the change to the Workplace Relations Act that we passed around flexible work. Uh, and it meant that anyone and everyone could request flexible work, and it wasn't just restricted to caring responsibilities. 
Uh, and the number of conversations uh, that flexible work has really transformed the relationship between employers and employees. And Andrew Little was a bit kind of contradictory in his contribution because on the one hand he was saying um, that you know, the employers he knew, whether they were the small dairy owners or, or larger employers, you know, had very trusted relationships in their workplaces, um, and that was fantastic. Well, if there were such trusted relationships in their workplaces, why don't they trust um, the employers and the employees uh, to navigate these and to use the existing legislative frameworks to be able to do that? Um, so it was somewhat contradictory. And on that note of uh, flexibility, uh, I do hope that the government, is, and Jan Logie in particular, is seriously examining uh, any proposed changes to employment relations law to make sure that the unintended consequences don't affect women, don't affect uh, the victims that you are, um, Jan Logie, that is intended in this legislation, and I say we support the intent of it. But one of the key differences with our side of the House, and I know Mark Mitchell has worked hard uh, to try and make improvements to this legislation with significantly thought through um, SOPs, it's about, it's about being practical, it's about being sensible, and it's about looking at how you deliver a solution on the ground. And that's really the only uh, reason that National's not supporting this bill. We support the intent. Absolutely. Uh, as I said, I am concerned about potential other changes to employment relations law. Uh, I, I'm saddened at the SOP around a nationwide campaign uh, so that employers understood what their choices and options were uh, as well, and, and so they understood how they could support victims of family violence. Because, um, you know, I, I, recall, I recall an example where uh, a workmate was uh, a victim of family violence. And every time their work phone rang, they were just went into a state of paralysis um, because their, the perpetrator of family violence would harass them at work, um, would you just never know what time of day um, they would phone. And I know the very real impact uh, it had on this person and the challenge of the employer in terms of understanding how to provide support. And so coming back to Andrew Little's comment, it is about that trusted relationship. It is about the ability of an employer and an employee uh, to navigate a very challenging issue together. Uh, and so we support the intent, but unfortunately uh, don't support uh, the way that this bill has finally been drafted. And I hope that the government picks up our earlier work and legislation that's currently before the House um, and picks up our strong record of support in a number of different practical, sensible ways um, to support and reduce uh, family violence. Uh, Angie Warren Clark. <laughs> oh, thank you. On this. Uh